So I'd like to welcome everybody to another Cotton in Canada uh, webinar. Today we're going to talk about a few topics and uh, you may know uh, Jeremy out of our Toronto office. Uh, he's appeared before, uh, but now we're happy to have Samuel St. John who is in our Montreal office. Uh, great guy, has a, a background, a family from, that has worked in construction and uh, we are very fortunate to have him here. He is fluent in both English and French. And uh, today what I want to do, guys, is I kind of want to go over a couple of topics that I know are on contractors' minds. And the first thing I want to talk about is material shortages, sort of supply chain related issues. I could tell you, you know, throughout the United States, there's been a lot of issues with shortages of shingles, um, you know, and the Iowa, Illinois area, you're looking at about 10 to 12 weeks to get shingles. Down here in Florida, in some areas, you're looking at eight weeks. Um, and obviously, lumber prices have gone through the roof. Um, right now, I'm seeing spikes as much as anywhere between 50 to 80 uh, percent increase in um, soft lumber prices, uh, the lumber that's used for residential construction primarily. Um, and that would include decking for roofs and also the uh, framing uh, type wood that's needed. So I guess let's, let's kind of go around. Jeremy, what are, what are you seeing in um, the Toronto area in Canada? Are you, are you, have you experienced any or heard of any issues related to uh, supply chain uh, shortages? Yeah, both domestically and internationally. Um, I've had one of my clients had an issue with supply chain shortages from China of raw materials. Um, and, and this goes way back in, in, to the beginning of the COVID uh, outbreak. And they ended up having to get alternate arrangements made. You know, you've got customers to keep happy and uh, it sort of backfired on them. And now we're working on a claim, you know, to get them sorted out. But generally, you know, a lot of my clients have spoke, uh, spoken to me about <clears throat> maybe beefing up their contracts moving forward to account for some of these uh, eventualities stemming from COVID. But yeah, there's a lot of chatter about supply chain uh, issues and, and I think it's only gonna continue. Yeah, and that's a great point, Jeremy. You know, one of the things that we recommend, regardless of whether you're in Canada or the States, is, you know, um, consider a, a price acceleration provision that allows for you to get an increase um, in your contract price in the event that any material line item increases by 5% or more. Um, because of shortages that we're experiencing, a lot of times prices are going up, so that's something to consider. The next thing that you should really consider is looking at delays um, because of some of these shortages. We've had, um, you know, increased uh, time to get stuff done that, that elongates the schedule. And anytime you have that, you want to make sure you account for that in your delay provisions. So Sam, let's turn to you. What are, what are you seeing over in Quebec and Montreal? What, what kind of supply issues are you having over there? Well, both of those contractual points are really interesting and resonating with what we're experiencing here. Uh, as I was uh, talking earlier with one, uh, with one of my clients, uh, we were, were experiencing shortages in both uh, workforce and in materials, which causes delays and which causes troubles uh, as soon as uh, the bidding step. So I'm, I'm having discussions with, with clients and relations who, are, uh, who have difficulties when it comes to bidding because uh, they can't put a price on materials that, that they don't have and that they don't know if it's gonna come. Even providers, as far as manufacturers and, and shops are not willing to give guarantees on the prices. So when it comes to the contractors, it's hard to, to bid and put a put a price tag on that, and then the delays too are uh, are also a difficulty that people are facing, both because of the shortages in materials and in workforce too. Uh, when you don't have the necessary workforce to accomplish what what you bid for, it's difficult to to go through with the with the contract. So that's these are these are uh, I'm guessing. Uh, effects of both the, co the COVID, but a shortage that we, are, we already had here in terms of the workforce. It was already, hard, it was already hard, 
hard up here in Quebec uh, as far as the workforce. And then COVID just uh, was kind of the last nail in the coffin. If I may. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Sam. You know, I always say the biggest threat to construction right now anywhere in the world is, is lack of skilled labor. Um, and with COVID-19, you know, it's interesting you mentioned that, um, you know, here in the States, we're pretty much still in the first wave. And I think a lot of that is, is just because of sort of the disparate treatment that's gone on throughout each of the states. It's been left up to the states uh, to kind of figure out what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. So you, you really haven't seen uh, a big change in infection rates, death rates, that kind of stuff. You know, it's been pretty consistent. And um, that's, that's one of the issues is, is we're still right in the mix. But what I have heard, I want to talk to you guys about it a little bit, is um, Canada's done a, a fantastic job from a federal perspective uh, trying to limit the spread of COVID. And um, you guys had pretty much, uh, from what I heard, had, had um, you know, I wouldn't say eliminated it, but had gotten it to a point where it was, it was relatively nominal. But I'm hearing reports now that it's starting to, to come about again, it's starting to spike again. So, Jeremy, what are you seeing in, in Ontario? What, uh, what have you heard, and, and is that the truth? Is it starting to come back? Yeah, well, I only recently returned to Ontario. Um, up until uh, a few days ago, I was in Atlantic Canada, where there were no cases at all. And, and, and that was as a, a result of uh, avid avoidance of COVID. In fact, the borders to all four Atlantic provinces were shut even to Canadians, um, and they still are, unless you have an exemption or, or a good reason to go. Um, so they're doing fine out there. And, and for those south of the border watching this, it's those provinces are Newfoundland, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI. So you can find your way in there somehow. It's COVID free. Ontario, on the other hand, it's not good. I mean, it was under control for most of the summer there were a lot of restrictions, um, and there it was broken down by city. So Toronto and Ottawa, some of the larger centers had stricter rules, but co cases were going down. Now they're back up to like 350, 450 a day. So now all the restrictions are back in Ontario's and some of Canada's biggest cities. So, you know, things could slow down again, but to keep things on the uh, construction uh, topic here, that so far is unaffected. If you're a builder or you're a contractor, you're, you should be able to carry on with your work. Uh, now, there could be some demand uh, issues, but, uh, and, and you know, you, you'll have to keep apprised of government uh, suggestions as to how to protect your workforce and, and all that, but Hopefully, uh, they don't shut down construction projects again like they, they did for a little while in March. Yeah, that's, that's the scary part is keep, keep construction going, right? <laughs> uh, so, Sam, tell us a little bit about uh, Quebec and Montreal. How's, how's COVID over there? Well, pretty similarly to, to Ontario, uh, now in Quebec, we're, um, we're awaiting the second wave, and it's pretty much upon us right now. Uh, as in Ontario, they've broken down the province in uh, regions, into regions, and they've attributed uh, color codes to each region depending on the level of, uh, <clears throat> of spreading of the COVID. And uh, now Montreal, the Montreal region, for example, just switched back to orange, which is uh, the ultimate level just before red. So we're pretty much into the second wave right now. What we've experienced uh, as far as the first wave this spring was a shutdown even between the regions. So people couldn't travel between Montreal and say the, the Laurentian region, north of Montreal. So what people are fearing here as much uh, as, uh, well, people, everyday life people and, and contractors and, and manufacturers as well is, is limitations on the movements too. Uh, yeah. that this is going to come back so far it hasn't been announced but uh, we, we can maybe expect some some kind of measures in that in that area if, if, if the second wave hits as hard as it was uh, in the springtime yeah that's, that, 
that uncertainty <laughs> is is scary. You know, I I this I remember when COVID first hit, and we were talking about it here in March, and you know I was asked by various associations whether or not it was okay to have events in May, and I'm like, oh yeah, this this thing's gonna blow. It's not gonna be, you know. And then as the thing progressed, we kept kicking and kicking and then eventually canceling. And um, I don't think anybody really realized when this thing first happened that we'd still be in this level of it. Uh, and now, you know, I'm thinking this time next year, we're probably still going to be dealing with this. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's been a very interesting, unusual time for the construction industry. And uh, the good news is, is that unlike a lot of other industries, I think regardless of whether you're in Canada or the States, um, it has been somewhat insulated and protected and allowed to continue to do work generally. You know, there's always the exceptions, but uh, that is a, is a blessing for sure for, for the construction industry. So guys, I want to thank you. I appreciate the, uh, the time that you gave me today to kind of talk about these issues. I want to let anybody uh, out there know that if you've got any questions for any of our Canadian team, feel free to give them a call. Uh, you can go right to our website right here and uh, we'll be happy to uh, answer anything that you've got. Um, stay tuned for more. You know, if you've got any specific topics you'd like us to uh, talk about, let us know. Uh, and again, we always appreciate you. Thank you.